Please be seated. Thank you. Well, good morning. How are you all today? Okay, is the state ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. State's calls will take it to Crop. All right. Detective Crop. Come on up, Detective. Good morning. Just have a seat, and I'll swear you in after you have a seat. I'll raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in the cause now pending before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so up you got it. I do. Thank you. Oh. Sir? Good morning. Good morning. Can you state your name for the record, please? Jody Kropp. K-R- Can you spell your last name for the K-R-O-P-P. How are you employed? I'm a detective with the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department in Waukesha, Wisconsin. How long have you worked for the Waukesha Sheriff's Office? I'm in my 17th year. And what is your current assignment? I'm assigned to the Identification Bureau, uh, which entails the crime scene investigation, uh, property management, and uh, evidence management for the property or custody. How long have you worked in that role? 2012, so going on my sixth year. What kinds of things have you done in your career with that sheriff's office? Um, from the very beginning or just for... From the very beginning, just um, in general. Yep, just started out as a patrol deputy for the sheriff's department, did patrol duties uh, until 2012, and then promoted to detective, general detective, just did general investigations, and then in 2012 took the uh, identification bureau where it's specialized training in crime scene investigation, property, and evidence collection. I want to draw your attention to June 16th of 2015. Do you have an occasion to assist the Green County Sheriff's Office with regard to a search in the city or village of Big Bend? I did. In Wisconsin? Yes. Is that in Waukesha County? It is. Um, What was your role in assisting the Green County Sheriff's Office in that investigation? I was assigned to um, document the entire search warrant process through photographs. And what residence was it that you were at? The address or? Yes, or just where was it? Uh, it was in the village of Big Ben on Cherry Street. I didn't memorize the entire length of the, the address. It's quite long. So unlike in Springfield, the addresses in Big Ben are pretty long. Yeah, we have south numbers and with sometimes two or three numbers, and then our west numbers are generally five numbers long. So we have a south number and then a west number, all the same address, and then the road name that is associated with those numbers and letters. So with west 228, south 870, 8755, sound familiar? It does. And we'll see that in one of your pictures, actually. Correct. And... During that search of that residence, was that pursuant to a search warrant? It was. And were you looking for evidence related to the murder of Bobby Blanchard here in Springfield, Missouri? Yes. And your role was uh, photography? Yes. Tell us just in general how the Waukesha County Sheriff's Office processed that out on the street. Uh, for, for our every search warrant, we try to designate um, letters per room to help keep it organized as far as which detective serves which room instead of everybody just kind of going off in their own direction. So prior to any any search being done, um, the person assigned to do photo documentaries of, of the property will do overall photographs of the entire exterior of the residence and then as we work through um, the residence and any outbuildings, we're just going to try to document the original condition of the rooms prior to any searches being done. And as we enter the room, we'll designate it a letter, which just helps us organize if anything is found in those rooms at some point, um, which detect- the detective that's assigned to that area um, documents what room they are in and then what they found. And then after the overalls are done, once the search commences, if they do find a piece of evidence before it's um, collected, it will be photographed by me and then collected. And if anything needs to be documented, such as serial numbers or maker models of certain items that are found, those will be taken with closer up photos to document the numbers. 
prior in document search, did you have some general information about who was associated with that house? Yes. Who was that? Uh, it should the go to John residence. Um, specifically, we're looking for any evidence related uh, either to Nicholas and um, Gypsy Blanchard. I'm going to show you a series of photographs that have not been introduced into evidence yet. And I'll read what they're marked. And as we go through, if you just take a look at them, and I'll ask you some general questions about them after we go through the list. So what's been marked for states for identification at states exhibits 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74 and 75, 76, 77, 78, and 80, 81, 83, 84, 85, 87, 88, 90, 91, 93, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 128, 129, and 130. Do you recognize in general what's depicted in those photographs? Yes. And what in general is depicted in those photographs? It would be the actual address where the search warrant was completed and the overview of the, the residence and then any items that were collected as evidence through all the residence. And you would have taken many more pictures than the ones we just saw here, correct? Correct. These are just some of the ones that have been selected for trial. Yes. And do these photographs fairly and accurately depict Nicholas Go to John's residence on the day of the search? Yes. I'd move to admit that list of exhibits, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. They'll be received without objection. Just so I'm clear, 81 is a photograph, did you say? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, of hard drives? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, because it just said hard drives right. on here. Yes, okay. there are some skipped numbers there that will be physical items. Okay, thank you.
Can you see that all right? Yes. Everyone want to stay okay? All right, what are we looking here at in states of the 68? This will be uh, standing on Cherry Street, looking directly at the front of the residence with that forfeit address for the search warrant. And then the states of the 69? That would be the posted address, which we do west to where it would be first from mm -hmm. the court at South P755 Cherry Street. So if we were to read that, if we were thinking of the address, actually you would read it bottom to top. Correct. Yeah. 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 What are we looking at here? 670? This would be a screen door entrance into the residence um, where we made our initial entrance for the search warrant. What are we looking at here in 71? As the screen door was opened. Um, what I'd like to do is just show my progression into the residence. So I'm right now I'm kind of standing in the threshold of that screen door as it's open. This Where are we now? This is what it's, I would call a kitchen area. So this would be a table. Um, so as we, the last picture, as you walk through that screen door, you're going to go continue straight past the stairs that were on the right, and then it would open up into this little kitchen area or the kitchen table. And then are you going to document it into? Subsequent photos, some items found on this table by another detective? Yes. Is that what we're looking here at in State Exhibit 73? Yes, the, the black trifold wall that would have been in that last picture towards the center of the table. Who was that on top of the wall up there? Uh, flip cell phone, black flip cell phone. Kind of, kind of so we're looking at State Exhibit 74 now. And then State Exhibit 75, what is that? That would be that same flip phone from the last picture, all of it's opened up at this point. And States to 76. Just the top view of the phone as it's opened up. Open the tripod wallet from the previous picture that was opened up with the uh, Samsung photo ID. And that's 60 to 77. What are we here in 78? This would be the kitchen area. The Wisconsin identification card for uh, Nicholas Golden John's information. It was in that trifold wallet? It was. Where are we now? We are upstairs. So as you came in that screen door, there was a uh, stairway going up, and this would have been a uh, bedroom. But as you top the stairs, opens up into an open room, turn left, walk straight ahead, and then that would the farthest you could go straight ahead would open up into this room. Then there's like a door over here. What is that door now? That was a closet. Now where are we? In Almost standing in front of that closet door, looking to our right uh, in the corner of that same bedroom. And so over here, in this like, entertainment center, is that like a monitor or a television, that black item there? Correct. I believe that was being used at the time as uh, like a computer monitor, large. What are these? These are two uh, hard drives that were found uh, in the same bedroom. And were they found not in a computer, but separate, just like we see them? Correct. They were just late when they were found, they were just laid separate for photograph purposes like this, but they were not removed from any towers. Now, if you say since 84, what do we see in this photograph? Uh, so now, we're, if you see that door up in the top right of the picture, that's actually the entry door into the bedroom. Uh, so this will be to your immediate right as you come in. Um, specifically here, I, I wanted to document the brown leather jacket on the floor next to a red and black duffel bag. And just to the left of that are going to be several electronic items. It's kind of hard to see because it's uh, all black, but we'll see in another picture. But is there like a laptop computer bag right there that I'm highlighting? There is. And then that silver and black item, what is that? That would be the computer color that should have been hooked up to that TV monitor. And then this wooden area over here, that's, is that that entertainment center with the monitor in it we saw early? It is. What are we looking at here at 85? This is a, what we call a medium photograph of specific electronic items. So we have the computer tower on the bottom left, we have an Xbox, um, entertainment or, um, gaming system, just on top of that. And then over to the right, next to the red and black marble leg is a black, I believe, leather laptop case. 
criteria that we're looking at? Yes. We're looking at here in 87. So, and we opened up that laptop case. Uh, we located the white HP laptop. So the white there is like the lid of a Hewlett uh, Packard laptop computer? Correct, the top cover, yeah. <laughs> And here in 88, what's that? This is the flip side of that laptop, just documenting serial numbers for that specific white laptop from the last photo. And down to 90, what are we looking at? Um, the, the red and black double bag, which uh, contains clothing items. Now in exhibit 91. Um, black date book on backpack that also contain personal items. If I recall in one of our earlier pictures, we were standing in the doorway, and that backpack was sort of over to the left. It was. It was I would classify it kind of out from that closet door on the left-hand side. So what are we looking at here in 693? These are all the individual items removed from the interior of that Facebook well, backpack at the top of the screen. Um, just laid out for overall pictures to show everything generally what was in that backpack at the time. And this item that had the pointer on there, that black rectangle, what is that? That would be another cell phone. Yep, the LG cell phone? Correct. And... Back up to 93. All right, so just down below the cell phone, what's that? Uh, black, oh, I'm sorry, a roll of black, I believe top two. And what's this item here? The bank bank from Community National Bank. This item here? A uh, box of handcuffs. Now in 95, can we see that box of handcuffs a little more clearly? Yes. And community national bank bag. What is this here? This was a, I would say, you know, inside the black bag. Um, the right in SAG savings was at this time an undetermined amount of uh, U.S. currency. And over here, these white rectangular items? Yeah, that would be like a bus ticket documenting different stops um, from Springfield back to Milwaukee. Greyhound, I believe. 6296. Uh, Social Security card uh, with the name of Gypsy Blanchard. 97. I believe it's got a healthcare card with the same name of Gypsy, Gypsy Blanchard. And then a close-up photograph of the Zabot bag with the U.S. currency. Which is nine, Exhibit 98, correct? Yes. Exhibit 99. Close-up photographs of those Greenhouse bus tickets. From Springfield, I know it's small, but from Springfield to Milwaukee? Correct. What are we looking at here? These were a pair of white uh, tennis shoes located in that same bedroom um, on the floor. I believe straight off from that class floor again. And based on your training and experience, why did you document this particular pair of white tennis shoes? Um, during the overall photograph in the medium, I, I observed, like you can kind of see at this point, uh, an unknown red substance that appeared to be either direct or spattered onto these white tennis shoes. Um, and I believe that there was a possibility that those would be blood. So that's why they were taken. Is there a map pointer there in the corner? Yes. When you said you can see it a little bit in this photograph, would you kind of show us this overall photograph what you're talking about? Can I step down? Yes, sir. So on this left tennis shoe here, there's a very small uh, red dot. Of course, the tall portion of this. Uh, the right tennis shoe, or the front half of the shoe, um, there's what I would call a blood droplet. And then on the right half of the toes, there's also another, what I would say, a blood smear. Suspected blood smear. Thank you. Stay standing for a minute. States exhibit one or four, where are we looking at here? This would be the, the right tennis shoe with the close up photograph of blood, of the suspected blood droplet, and on the right side, and the suspected blood smears. You chose the right side. So there would be one a little bit higher up here by the laces, and one down here towards the toes. 1105. Uh, there will be suspected blood right here towards the phone. It's very small. I think I'm able to see a little bit of a red a shadow here of the blood red itself. And there's even a closer up photograph of that. So again, here's a little dot 
I'm going to drive by and I'm going to rush you. Okay, that's 106, that further close up? Yes. Down states to do it 107, we're we looking at. This would be, here's the original um, Ziploc bag from the previous pictures that had nest bank savings written on it. And then detectives had sorted the, the currency by denomination and they just laid it all for further documentation of what was, how much money was there. So left to right, what denominations do we have there? Uh, starting with 100, 50, 20s, 10s, 5s, a $2 bill, and then singles. What are we looking at here? We're awake. This is that brown leather jacket that would have been directly to the right as you come to the bedroom, uh, next to that red duffel bag. And if I remember correctly, it was earlier, but there wasn't that yellow and white piece of paper wasn't sitting on it in the earlier photograph. What is that? Uh, this this was removed from one of the jacket pockets by a uh, detective during the search. Uh, it is a, I would say, just a memo paper from Days Inn um, Hotels. Is that what we're looking at here in close up in 109? Yes. With a list toothbrush, lip balm, and condoms? Correct. Right. Six exhibit 111, what is this? Uh, this was a, a reddish or pink colored um, piece of luggage that was also in that bedroom upstairs. And I, if I recall correctly, this is, if I'm saying it over to the left as well, as opposed to over by the computer tower? Correct. Yep, here would be the closet door. You can move it in the framework of the closet door. Exhibit 112. Uh, it's a block bay that contained um, three suspected like women's weights. And were those inside that pink bag? Yes. Did you eventually move the pink bag um, somewhere out of the room to further document what was in it? We did. We took it downstairs and outside to get better lighting. It was pretty congested in the room at the time, and just to be able to lay. There's a significant amount of light in that bag in order to lay it out correctly and get good overall photos. We took it downstairs outside. And did you do that with that red and black Marlboro duffel bag as well? We did. We're looking at here is State's Exhibit 113. The top portion, this would actually be the piece of luggage that was uh, photographed and removed from the bedroom. And then we laid out a clean drop cloth just to organize the items that were in the bag, get the a wide overall picture of the items that were in that bag. What are we looking at here in State's Exhibit 114? Uh, similarly to the, the piece of luggage, we have to use that duffel bag that was removed uh, from the bedroom. And again, a, a, a new clay drop cloth. How uh, we get clothing items removed from the interior of that, that couple thing. What is this in Stacey Tibet 115? Uh, this is a okay, hotel uh, room key that you get when you first check it, I'll put your keys in there and doesn't think what the room that you're going to stay in. Like that paper folder <laughs> they give you with your keys in it? Yes. And does it have a room number on it? It shows room 227. What is this in 116? Uh, this was a, a black short sleeve shirt located in that red double leg. Just lay out again to hold all photographs the, the front portion of the shirt. Well, there's some things in particular about this shirt and some other clothing we're going to see from the red double bag that you documented? Yes. What was that in general? There were some uh, smears and, and stains that appeared to be reddish in color, like their red shoe that was suspected. How uh, different the same experience to possibly be blood. What are we looking at in 117? So this would be the bottom portion of the t-shirt underneath the, the graphics. Um, so specifically what I wanted to document here would be uh, this red item here. Uh, and then kind of hard to see, uh, but throughout this entire area here, uh, there appears to be some sort of um, reddish matter. Uh, on the biological material, um, specifically this one, hopefully we can, we can see pretty good. Uh, then we just suspected that to be marked. And 118? See a little bit better here. Uh, this is the, the larger area of, of material. And then from here to here, there's just, there's, there's a different level to it, so we suspected that as well. So if you look up in the top right hand corner, that's oh. that smaller. Here piece that we saw in the earlier photograph, correct? Yes. Correct. Right. So it's the 119, what are we looking at here? The black uh, zippered hooded uh, sweatshirt, but again, what we suspect they have uh, blood on it. Stacey exhibit 120. So this is just, again, a closer up version of it. We do, I do have some uh, orange pointers to try to identify specifically what I wanted to show. 
in that some guy suspected blood here as well as here. And then there's just a reddish hue over here as well. But nothing that jumps all the way. It seems at 121, we'll be looking right here. The left sleeve of that black and it's measured. Now in 122. Okay. At the end of the cup for that sleeve, um, there's additional um, dry suspected blood. So it's 123. Uh, I classified these as black and red jogging pants that were in that red bubble bag. And uh, of course, the top half of in this area, there should be some items of interest that we wanted to talk about. All right, now we move back into the house for 128. What are we looking at here? This would be that closet to your immediate left as you enter that upstairs bedroom. But now the door is open compared to how it's closed in the other pictures. And if I look sort of into the closet, do I see something of interest down there in the corner? Yes, as they were completing their inventory search of this closet, they located there should be a cardboard box in this drawer right here and right behind it. A sealed, one thing maybe 10 by 12 inch, but a lot of gold. Down in space, 129, we see that box you were just referencing? Yes, and this would be that on gold. Space to 130. This is a close up of the front of that envelope with the name of the Cody John and the address up on Cherry Street or where the search warrant will be completed. And what's the return address? The top line has the last name of Blanchard. Um, the address of 2103 West Volunteer Way, Springfield, Missouri. Go ahead and take your seat. After you documented those items, were they then packaged by somebody? Yes. If, if what happens if a detective finds old items, I come and photograph, document it, and then that detective would transport it to uh, another one of our identification bureau detectives um, in a control area downstairs where he would document the packaging. In this case, was that Detective Allen Boss? It was. Nothing further. Thank you. Any questions of this witness? Just a few, Your Honor. Yes, sir. <laughs> Detective Proud, I just have a few questions. Uh, you referred to the unknown red substance, correct? Correct. You can't call it blood because it had been tested at that time. Correct. Uh, but you suspected it was blood. Yes. And uh, going back to number 103 and uh, 104, uh, those exhibits, the white shoes, uh, you immediately saw those, those red droplets on them, correct? When I did my meeting, yes, during the overall photographs, yes. Okay, and you suspected they were blood. Yes. Now you've got a little training and then and blood splatter and, and droplets and that sort of thing, don't you? Yes. Okay. Uh, the shoes didn't appear to have been cleaned, did they? I don't believe so. And I guess the same thing could be said with uh, the uh, hooded sweatshirt, uh, the t-shirt, um, the other items that were suspected. Well, they didn't appear to have been cleaned. Correct. And they were kind of wadded up and, and stuck in that uh, Marlboro bag. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's also a bag that said nest egg savings, correct? Yes. And, and how much money was contained in that bag? I do not know the total denominations. Okay. And uh, you referred earlier to uh, that address as the Godijan residence, correct? Yes. Uh, other people were there, correct? I'm unsure. You're not sure? I do not know. Did, did it have an appearance that there were other people living there? Yes, there was a, a master bedroom, um, which I believe that, the, I guess now that the parents did reside there. Okay, so Nick, you would assume, was living at home with his, his mom? Yes. And he had the upstairs kind of attic bedroom, correct? Correct. And exhibit number 77, uh, the Wisconsin photo ID, and the margin number 78, that was just a state identification card, correct? Correct. 
uh, there wasn't a driver's license for Nick to go to John, was there? If there was, I didn't individually photograph it. Thank you, sir. Anything further? Yes, sir. No, May this officer be excused? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Objective? Thank you. Have a safe trip home. Thank you very much. We have another witness? Yes, sir. State call to pick it down, boss. All right. Come on up, detective. Let's have a seat right here. It's easier if you sit. That's People what fall from. off when I swear on that for some reason. <laughs> you can solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in the cause now pending before the court. Be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth stuff you got. Yes, I do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Patterson. Thank you. State your name, please. My name is Alan Voss. Last name is spelled V as in Victor, O-S-S. -S. Did you used to work for the Waukesha Sheriff's Department? Yes, sir. Have you since retired from that department? I have. Um, when, how long did you work with the Waukesha Sheriff's Office? Just over 28 years. Um, and towards the end of your career, um, what kind of work were you doing for the Sheriff's Office? I was assigned uh, as a detective to our identification bureau. And were you working in that capacity in June of 2015? Yes, I was. On June 16th of 2015, did you have the occasion to assist the Green County Sheriff's Office from Springfield, Missouri in the search of a residence on Cherry Street in Big Bend? Yes. What was your role in that search of that house? Myself and Detective Crop were sent to that home uh, to collect document and preserve evidence that the search team was finding. Uh, Detective Crop decided to resplit the duties. He was going to be the photographer, photographer, and I was going to be the written documentation person and the uh, packager of the evidence. And so by written documentation, you mean keeping a wall out of what things were taken? Correct, and a property inventory sheet. And I think you said also packaging the items? Yes, sir. Did you, would you like go and do that in each individual room or were you set up in a specific place? What we do on larger crime scenes is uh, whoever's doing the docu written documentation and the packaging will find a room or a location in the residence and set up a little workstation. And so did you do that in this case? I did, I picked a small table in the kitchen uh, that was relatively out of the way and made a little space for myself. And as you were doing that, as you were setting up, did you actually find some items of interest yourself that were seized? I did. What were those items? Uh, the table I was using had a bunch of things on it. So I cleared those off, and while I was doing that, I found a cell phone and a wallet. Okay, do you recognize what's depicted and what's been admitted as State Exhibit 68? Yes, sir. In State Exhibit 71, can we see sort of the area in general where you were talking about that you set up? Yes, straight ahead in the kitchen area. This area back here? Yes. And then State Exhibit 72, what's depicted in that? That is the table that I used uh, after I cleared it off to do my written documentation and package. The state exhibit 74, what do we see here? That is a flip phone, flip cell phone, and a wallet. And what about the state exhibit 75, what is that? That's the same flip phone, just open it up and if there's anything on the screen, we document it without going into the phone, actually, so to speak. 62 to 76. That's the back side of the phone opened up as well. Yeah. 
And I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification the State's Exhibit 79. And this has been open in preparation for trial, so we've looked at it before, correct? Correct. And so the outside clear packaging looks like it's from the Green County Sheriff's Office. Yes. And that has our Exhibit 79 sticker on it. That's correct. And if we look inside of it, what is this manila envelope here that we're looking at? That is the original envelope that I packaged the item in after I found it on the table. How do you know that? It's my writing. Uh, I have my name and I circled my name on the front. Uh, on the evidence seal is my initials and date as well. And is that sort of standard procedure when you seal something with evidence tape to put your initials and the date across the evidence tape? Yes. And what color is your evidence tape that your agency uses? Well, in this case, I believe I use mostly yellow, um, but to be honest, there's really, we use different colors. It's just uh, that day I had some yellow tape. Okay. And so if we look inside your envelope, what do we see inside there? There is a black flip phone and a battery that took the battery. Okay. Other than the fact that the battery's been taken out, do you think you see the face of the phone there now? Yes, and it has the, uh, the name, Titus Kiyosera. The front of the Other than the fact that the battery's been taken out, does that appear to be in substantially the same condition as when you seized it? Yes, it does. I do to admit State's Exhibit 79 and its contents. No, okay. It can be received without objection. Exhibit 80. I believe that is uh, Mr. Go to John's bedroom. Okay. Is that paper bag something you're familiar with? Yes, that was collected uh, by our detectives as well. Is that something you ended up packaging? Yes, sir. Chair has been marked as case exhibit 92. And uh, again, this is, looks like it's in a Green County bag, correct? Yes, sir. So look inside of there. You recognize the writing on the inner bag? Yes, that's my writing. And this bag has some clear evidence tape on it. Yes, sir. Is that something you use for larger items? Correct. It's a little stronger. So it doesn't rip as easy to use it on large items. And is this a backpack and its contents? Yes, sir. Backpack and its contents? Yes, sir. Is it... Looking inside of it? Yes, that is the item that we collected and that I packaged. And is it in substantially the same condition as when you packaged it? It does look to be this. I moved to admit State's Exhibit 92 and its contents. Okay. Now you have, the, you have the contents listed as a separate Exhibit 93. I'm just going to admit it as 92 and its contents. 92, okay. Any objection to that? Okay. We'll show 92 coming in and 93 is incorporated now into the item. So in 83, there's a bed there. Yes. And then on the corner of that bed are the two hard drives. Were those packaged by you as well? Yes, they were.
You want to see my exhibit list? No, I just need a sticker. Oh, okay. We show it's been marked for identification as states to do it 81A. Yes. Again, that's in a Green County bag. Yes, it is. In the back here, it says open 11, 12, 18. Are those your initials there? Yes, sir. So if you look inside, say to do it 81A, do you recognize that bag? Yes, that's the bag I put the items in originally. It's got a number five circled at the top. Yes, it should be on the property sheet number five. Okay. And on the back of that bag? It's got my initials and date across the field. If we look inside, what do we see inside? Looks like the two hard drives that you showed me on, that you showed on the picture. And they're substantially the same condition as when you took them? It does look like that, yes. I moved the Med States Exhibit 81A in its contents. Okay. Without objection. In State's Exhibit 85, you see the desktop computer there? Yes. Is that something that you also packaged? Yes, they brought that down to me and we did record that item. Oops. I think it was packaged with the modem that we saw on top of it, correct? Correct. All right, so on the Green County sticker on this pink bag, this is marked as State's Exhibit 86. Uh, and did you examine this, uh, the contents of that with me through the pink bag yes. the other day? We looked through the bag, yes. And there's a serial number on the computer from State's Exhibit 85 that you packaged match the serial number on this computer here that's in State's Exhibit 86? Yes, it does. Is it in fairly the same condition as when you seized it? It looks to be, yes. I've moved to admit State's Exhibit 86 and its contents. Your Honor, we make an objection and ask to make correct. All right. Let's go in here then, please. Show. Exhibit 86 will be admitted subject to the conditions that we spoke about. You also package a laptop bag containing a white HP laptop that we see there in States Exhibit 87? Yes. Thank you. 
So just using the stocks for convenience, but inside the box, is there a bag marked State Exhibit 89? Yes, sir. Again, with the Green County Sheriff's Office sticker? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then if we look inside it, is there another Green County Sheriff's Office bag? Yes, there is. And inside of that, you see a bag with your residence tape and initials? Yes, sir. Is that the HP laptop? Yes, it is. Item 16. And is your package being in substantially the same condition as it was when you packaged the laptop and the laptop pack? It looks to be a physical contents. Any objection to the physical? There you go. Um, subject to the data contained there and be tied up at a later time. All right. Did you package a Marlboro bag and its contents? Yes. And we're looking at a picture of it in State's Exhibit 90, correct? Correct. Can you take a moment to look inside? It's Exhibit 124. Okay. Hey, Mr. Perry, I stepped into your conference room so I can show them something that's in there. Yes. Taking a, taking a moment to look at the contents that I think you did at 124, do you recognize what's inside there? Yes, sir. And what is it? Inside my evidence bag is the Marlboro duffel bag that was shown in the picture. So how do you recognize that as being the Marlboro bag that you packaged and see? Well, the inside bag has my, my little evidence tape as well as my initials and date. And my original lighting will be actually outside of the bag. In preparation for trial, did you assist us by removing the t-shirt and the hoodie from the Marlboro bag? Yes, sir. And did we package that separately? Yes, we did. Um, on a hanger? Hanger and then inside of a bag. Other than the fact that that t-shirt and the hoodie have been removed, is State's Exhibit 124A and its contents in substantially the same condition as when you seized it? Yes, it is. I move to admit State's Exhibit 124. Any objection? No, you're not. It'll be very soon. Show you what's been marked as page exhibit 124A. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. What is that? That is a t shirt and a hooded sweatshirt that we took out of the market. Okay. Are they in substantially the same condition as when you seized them? Yes, sir. I've moved to admit to exhibit 124A. Any objection? No. All right. And so, for the record, I've hung it up on a coat hanger and the hoodie is hung over the clown shirt, correct? Yes, correct.
Yeah, and then if you look at the contents of the faith, the fact that we already admitted it a few moments ago, correct? That's correct. States Exhibit 108, there's that phase in there that I see. Did you package that as well? Yes, that was brought to me and I did package that. To show you it's been marked as States Exhibit 110. Do you recognize that? Yes. So inside the plastic bag, what's inside there? That is my a small manila envelope with my writing on it. And then the note is also inside of that bag. Your initials and date on the back? My initials and date on my yellow evidence, too. Other than, it's been, other than the fact that it's been repackaged in this clear bag, are the contents of State Exhibit 110 substantially the same as when you seized them? Yes. And moved to admit State Exhibit 110. No objection. It would be received without objection. In States Exhibit 109, is that a close up of the note? We just put that in 110? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Did you package an item from the closet? Yes, I did. Is that a picture of it we're looking at in States Exhibit 130? Yes, it is. see there at 130, it was not opened by you, correct? Not, no, it was not. not, it, it, not a, I'm sorry. Packaged it as it was found. Correct. Marked by identification in States Exhibit 142. And that's another Green County bag, correct? Correct. We inside it, we'll pull out the bag inside of it. Do you recognize that bag? Yes, that would be my original bag that I packaged you in. And so that's when you say the item, are you referring to the envelope we see here in States Exhibit 130? Correct. If you look at the envelope inside here, is that substantially the same condition as it was when you seized it? Yes. Except that it appears it's been opened and the contents are removed, correct? Correct. Other than, other than that difference, is it substantially the same? Yes. We move to admit State Exhibit 142. No objection. We use the Any questions at this point? Gentlemen, I suspect the jury would want a break right now, so I don't have any questions. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep you from asking questions. Do no, you right. want to question after the break? No, Your Honor. All right. So may this witness be excused? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All uh, right. Detective? Thank you. Thank you. Careful getting down, okay? I will. My name, Mr. Mead, has a good suggestion. So. I want to again remind you of what you were told at the first recess of the court. Until you retire to consider your verdict, you must not discuss this case among yourselves or with others, or permit anyone to discuss it in your hearing. You should not form or express any opinion about the case until it is finally given to you to decide. Do not do any research or investigation on your own 
about any matter regarding this case or anyone involved with the trauma. Do not communicate with others about the case by any means. Do not read, view, or listen any newspaper, radio, electronic communication from the internet, or television report of the trial. I'm going to take about a 15 minute break. We will resume about 10:35. Okay. All rise. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you going back in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Where did this came from? Uh, no, 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 no. We thought it was like, why is this here? Can we put it back someplace? Yes, I will. Yes. You had this action mark, it seems like it was 120 or 125. I don't know if it's 125. 